the north-south house price divide will begin to narrow. Savills predicts that house prices in Scotland will rise by over 18%, in Wales by over 19%, and in parts of England outside of London by more than 20%. But in London and in the South East, there'll be much more modest house price growth. Henry Pryor is an independent property expert, and he's been tweeting about this, and he isn't convinced that this price gap between the North and South will change that much. Henry, this North-South house, house price gap it's widened massively since the crash. Why don't you think that it will narrow over time? Well, Winifred, it is. Um, a, there's a yawning gap between average prices uh, in the north and in the south, but predominantly my beef is purely that uh, uh, if you talk about house price inflation and rampant house prices, actually that's occurred over the last decade since the credit crunch in London and the southeast, and in the remainder of the country, as we saw from BBC Research last year, in fact, 53% of homes in the UK, once you factor in inflation, are worth less than they were a decade ago. In Northern Ireland, house prices are just 50% of what they were just before the credit crunch in 2007. And Savills, of course, who know a great deal about the housing market and for whom I have a lot of time and a lot of respect, are probably right that house prices are going to go up over the next four or five years, as their report suggests. The difficulty is that with so many things going on, not least of all what they're debating in Parliament and what Sarah was talking to you about a moment ago, we just simply don't know what's going to happen to the housing market. And to suggest that it is somehow a guarantee that house prices are going to go up, I think is perhaps a little disingenuous to those who are investing and putting their money into the places that they want to rent and to live in. So it's not that you don't believe it will happen. It's not that you think the opposite. You just think you just can't to call it in the current climate? I think there are two things, Winifred. First of all, it's very easy, particularly if you're selling houses or mortgages or financial services, to seem to be certain about what is going to happen in the future. But I think there are so many uncertainties ahead that the housing market can't afford that level of confidence. But also, secondly, we know that whilst it's tempting to use past performance as a guide to the future, that's very rash when it comes to any kind of financial investment. We don't look at a weather forecast for last summer when we decide whether we're going to pack a brolly today. And indeed, the housing statistics that the ONS have updated us with, with this morning tell us that actually house prices, although they're up by 3.5% nationally it's over the last 12 months, vary hugely across the country. And I'm a, it's just important that people understand that uh, the housing market itself is a patchwork quilt of different markets, and it's jolly difficult, possibly even rash, to make predictions about what is going to happen. It's much more sensible to talk about what might happen. It was predicted ages ago... Um, but now house prices in London are unaffordable for a lot of people. They really, really are. So you get people, adults living like students, sharing rented accommodation. Won't that eventually push people and companies further and further out? Well... It's important to remember this is not just a London thing when we talk about uh, affordability. We know that there are 1.2 million households on social housing waiting lists across the country. To our national embarrassment and shame, over 100,000 kids woke up in temporary accommodation last night, the equivalent of bed and breakfast this morning. And that is what's, uh, I'm afraid, haunting all those who are involved in the housing industry and the housing market. Those who have struggled to find homes to buy or to rent are struggling whether they're in the northwest, the northeast, or indeed in the more affluent southeast. The, the market will self-correct. The housing market ebbs and flows. Prices go up and go down. But we're now starting to see, particularly where house prices have leapt ahead, they've doubled in the capital over the last 10 years, Winifred. They are now starting to soften, as they always do. And as I've talked about with you and, uh, and I in the past, because of, of, the, of the way that the market operates, we can expect house prices probably to slide back through 2019 before they pick up again, if they're going to, as Savile suggests. Henry Pryor, thank you very much for that.